When someone insults you, when someone says something to you which you don't feel that you deserve, when they treat you badly, when they don't deal with you in a way that is probably just basic for human interaction, it's one of the best things that can happen to you and I. When someone treats you badly, when they betray you, lie to you, trick you, cut you off in traffic, <laughs> anything that Anything that comes along that insults your person is, in fact, one of the best things that can happen to you. And if uh, we are aware enough in that moment to be able to sidestep our rage, which is becoming way too common, uh, we should say Alhamdulillah at that moment. On the way here, I was just driving here, and I swerved slightly to the left, not even close to the line, but the person next to me wanted to make sure that I was invading their space. And they just wheeled on the horn. And I'm already having like kind of one of those days. I don't really need you to just take it easy, you know, have a little bit of patience. But it had me, but then that put me into a situation where I started thinking about this thing called the I. I. I is the probably one of the easiest sounds in the English language. Everyone can say it. I. I. We don't have funny letters like you, like with the U with the two dots on top and things like that. Our language is pretty simple as far as I can tell alphabetically speaking, and I is probably the most intense of letters. Uh, and like all signs, it's not intense because of what it is, it's intense because of what it points to. I is a letter, a letter is a sign, a sign that points to something which is very, very, very intense. Well, it seems to be. This I, the self, this ego, this person, the thing that's talking to me when I'm contemplating whether or not I should drive up a little faster to let that person know how I really feel. That person, that self, that ego, that thing that I am striving against towards my Lord, well, it's actually my <coughs> asset. If I understand it, I can think about it properly. Now this thing, the I, the self, this ego, this person, this consciousness, if you want to put it in that way, well, let's take a look at it, for example, for a second. When someone says you, I'm talking about me, what do they mean when they say I? In this case, it'd be you. Are you talking about my body? Is that what I am? Is that my identification? Is that how I'm, is that how I'm known through my body? Is my body that thing which identifies me to you? Well, if it is, then know that, well, I'm 37 years old and I, didn't, I wasn't born this size. I've gone through some changes. So if you saw me as a child and you saw me now, you would say they're two different people if you identify me through my body. So therefore I'm not my body. I can't be. Well, someone would say, well, perhaps you're, you are your name, what people call you. Well, I wasn't born Muhammad Abdul Latif. My mother didn't know that kind of language. I was born with an English name. My name was changed, but when my mother sees me, she's not confused as to who I am. If I walk in here tomorrow and everyone calls me Tony, I'll be the guy formerly known as, <laughs> now known as. But that doesn't change my identity, it doesn't make me somebody else. That's not the self. The self is not the body. The self is not the name. Well, okay, the self must be some attribute of mine. Well, last time I was here, I think my hair was curly and longer. Now it's not like that. Do you have any problem recognizing who I am? Sooner or later, some of this is turning white now. Sooner or later, it's all going to be white. Will I become someone else? Well, can it be through attributes then that you identify me? Well, this self, this thing that's so important to us, is not identified by 
my body is not identified by my attributes, is not identified by uh, a name, well, how do we know what it is? Well, it's this thing that is, it exists, it's, it's the being that you have. Oh, now you're really opening up the door. What does that mean? What does it mean to exist? What does it mean to be? What is being at the end of the day? Well, you know, man, come on, don't get into all that kind of stuff. We do it all. Being, you know, it is. Fine. Take a moment out of our busy lives when we're not veering slightly to the left or slightly to the right, when we're not checking our Facebook messages, when we're not getting notices from our boss that we're not doing so well, when we're not coming back with bad report cards. Take a moment to realize that all you and I are doing all day long is existing. All we do is be. <coughs> we are being, being in motion. It's all that happens, but the question is, what does that even mean? To be, to is. No, stop and think for a second. This is cool. What is the is? What is is? Is it is is qualified by cool? What is is? All we do all day long is be. I am a being. You identify me by being a being, but what does that even mean? If you can't identify what being is, certainly don't try to say what I is. The truth is, Allah knows and you don't know. That's the reality of the situation. If that's the reality of the situation, and I challenge someone to say otherwise, then why is it so important, this I? Why is it so important that if someone were to check this I, or say something to this I that I doesn't like? Why is that so important, when I doesn't even know what I is? And more importantly, if I don't know what I is, then how can I know who the creator of I is, who is pure and absolute pure? Or have I even considered that? Or do I even care? Or am I just blind and I don't know? And is it possible for I to have any understanding outside of revelation at this point? Don't I need something to come from somewhere else, beyond all this being, that will be able to reach inside of I and wake I up? Because I am not even thinking about what I am, but I'm doing I all day long, and the only time I seem to recognize when I am is when someone has the nerve and the gumption and the gall to be rude to I. Isn't the most rudest thing that I can do to I is not even to question what I is? Isn't that the height of bad manners? To my own self. I put food in I stomach. I spend all day making sure I have food in I stomach. And it can't just be food, it has to be tasty food in I stomach. That space that hopefully is only this large. For some of us, it's more like this. Because I have been doing a good job putting food in I belly. Now I sound like a Jamaican. Isn't it true? So when I am driving in the car to bring I to the masjid, and someone challenges I by, by giving me a hard time, maybe I should think about whether or not I even deserve really anything at any point from anyone, especially the one who made me. Allah gave me this I so that I can recognize the I. The only one who can even say I and it means anything is Allah. La ilaha illa ana. There is no God but I. Now, what kind of I is that? And you see what happens when someone tries to assert this I in front of the I that actually is. Isn't that the first thing that happened? Ana khayru minhu. I am better than him. Isn't that what he said? La'amallahu alayhi. Is it not shaitanic then for me to assert this I? Is it not a sunnah of the one who's cursed to assert this I, to push this I forward? Especially when I don't even know what it is. 
But what you and I like to do, and what you and I tend to like to do, is just to kind of mask everything. Just go on in life. Get education. Get a nice job. Get a nice house. Get a nice belly. Just go on in life. And anyone who would challenge the I, oh, especially if they're not from my religion, especially if they're not from my way of life, that gives me more of a reason to verify the I. But I'm here to say today to myself first that this I is the, most, is the largest obstacle, it's the greatest obstacle to progress. It is the greatest obstacle to happiness. It is the greatest obstacle to success. It is the greatest obstacle to felicity, happiness, fulfillment, uh, realizing the full capacity of being itself, ironically, is all contained in the letter I. I doesn't want to be a kind to another I. I doesn't want to be thoughtful of another I. I does not want to invite another I to the greatest of I's. But I wants to be confirmed. And I wants to be served. Have you seen the one who's taken himself as his own Lord? Oh, that's beautiful Arabic poetry, brother. That's Quran. That is Quran. You think Allah is asking these questions just to be poetic? To be philosophical? Ta'ala. And nowadays we're living in a time when the irony is that the only I we hear about has a pot on the end. In other words, the only I we engage, want to know about, what are its applications, how does it work, oh, I can download this, oh, I can download, oh, look at, look at the access I get, look at all the information inside. The only I that we actually look at these days has a pod on the end, or a pad on the end. So if there was any way for us, avenue for us to look inside of the eye and to understand it and to find it as a doorway to the actual eye, it's, been, it's already been monopolized by a company right over here somewhere in Silicon, the valley of the dead. So I say, this verse, we say it all the time in the khutbahs, but think about what it's saying. Oh, you who believe, be conscious of your Lord. The greatest consciousness that you and I can have of our Lord is one which supersedes the eye. That you see Allah before you see yourself. That's called taqwa. That you see Allah before you see yourself, that's called taqwa. This thing about dotting T's and, you know, uh, what do you call this? Crossing T's and dotting I's and making sure that you have all the sunnahs in place. That is a, that is a result. That is a result of this step. But what has happened in our tradition and what's happening in our schools, even to this day, is that we're just theorizing everything. We theorize proximity to Allah even. It's a theory. Get the theory down. MashaAllah, you got it, bro. <coughs> May Allah give us tawfiq. Amen. I'm going to stop through the lot. Stop through the lot. I'm going to stop through the lot. I'm asking uh, for us to ask Allah for forgiveness. Verily, He is the forgiving, He is the merciful. الحمد لله اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما بنك وقاتم لما سبق ناصر الحق بالحق والهادي إلى صراطك المستقيم وعلى آله وحضره المهدي العليم صلى الله عليه وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. In this, uh, you know, in our tradition, we have these individuals that were inspired to by God. God inspired their hearts. They're not prophets. There's certainly those drawn close, but they're not considered to be amongst the NBI. One of them would be the mother of Musa. 
May Allah be pleased with her, and may Allah Ta'ala uh, be, be, uh, send his peace upon Sayyidina Musa. Now, she was inspired to put her child into the river. She wasn't a prophet. What this means is that God can inspire and does inspire the souls. There is a direct link. It is there. It's actually better than Wi-Fi. And in that, I mean, better than Wi-Fi at the Mac store. Can you imagine that? Now, in that, here are some of the, the reception. This is what has been received from upon high as according to Ibn al the, the the Alexandrian. He says, this is what he heard from his Lord and he wrote it down. O slave, I have decreed in my eternity that the illumination of submission to me and the darkness of contention with me shall never unite in the heart of my slave. Whenever there is one of them, there cannot be the other with it. So choose for yourself. Be warned. For we have exalted your worth too highly that you should be busy with yourself. So do not belittle your worth. O he whom we have elevated, and do not humiliate yourself by going to other than me in need. O, o he whom we have exalted, be warned, you are too sublime in our eyes that you should occupy yourself with other than us. <coughs> For my divine presence have I created you, and towards it have I summoned you, and by the attractions of my providential care have I attracted you. So if you become busy with yourself, I will veil you. And if you follow its capricious desires and illusions, I will expel you. And if you leave it, I will draw you near. And if you seek my love by avoiding other than me, I will answer your call and desire. What he said was, oh slave. When you think about what a slave is, a slave is something that you own. In the Arabic language, you find this to be the case. Now the microphone, Abdi. This microphone, it belongs to me. Abdi, it's mine. Abd is a slave, something, your property. The property. You decide what you want to do with the property, what you don't want to do with the property. You decide how the property will be maintained or will not be maintained. It's your right. And that lot and that way we understand who we belong to. And he says, O oh slave, I have decreed in my eternity, meaning it's never been like this, that the illumination of submission to me and darkness and the darkness of contention with me shall never unite in the heart of my slave. Either we submit to Allah, meaning that we... How can you submit to Allah if you're not even looking for Him? How can someone submit to Allah when they're not even looking for Him? Some say, oh, you know, I obey the, I obey the laws, that's enough. You think that Allah made you for His laws? Allah created you and I for Sharia, that's what it is? As if Sharia is a worthy uh, object? Or is Sharia a means? And it's, it's in that way that something as beautiful as law itself, nothing more perfect than, and balanced than Sharia Allah itself, look at it and study it, you'll find it to be the case. But even that becomes darkness when it becomes other than Allah. Whenever there is one of them, there cannot be the other with it, so choose for yourself. Light and dark do not combine. Be warned. For we have exalted your worth. In other words, we know your value. We know who you are. We know what you're worth. We know what we put into you. We know what your end is. We made you with our own hands. We know. We know you. You don't know yourself. The original question in the khutbah is, what in the world does I even mean? Allah has all those answers. We have exalted your worth too highly that you should be busy with yourself. In other words, the irony of all this is, is that your worth is in your being busy with me, capital M. Your worth is in being busy with me, capital M. And your lack of worth is being busy with other than me. And is there a greater other than me than I? Is there a more subtle idol other than Allah than I? All of us, you know, I think everybody in this room has a Muslim name. Khalid, Muhammad, Ahmed, Jabir, MashaAllah. I'm sure all of us in this room pray five times a day. May Allah increase. 
I'm sure all of us are fasting. May Allah increase. I'm sure all of us have made Hajj. This is a pretty, you know, wealthy community. And we're probably going to go again. May Allah give us tawfiq and sponsor someone else as well. All that is there. But where is Allah? Where is I and where is Allah? Be warned, for we have exalted your words too highly that you should be busy with yourself, yourself, yourself. So do not belittle your worth, O he whom we have elevated, by being busy with yourself. In other words, Allah will take care of yourself just fine. Let him do that job. O he whom we have elevated, and do not humiliate yourself by going to, to, to other than me in need, O he whom we have exalted. Don't you know, and shouldn't I realize, that the people that are closest to Allah are the ones who have realized their need the most. The ones who are closest to Allah are the ones who have the closest relationship to the one who has put them in need. The ones who are closest to Allah are the ones whom Allah Himself, the one who has put them in need, instead of running away from Him, they run to Him. It's one thing to know that Allah is your Lord. MashaAllah alayk. It's another thing to know that Allah is the one who sends down the problems. MashaAllah alayya. It's something entirely different to then run towards the one that you know, that you perceive is harming you. Can Allah ever harm me? Does Allah have the capacity or ability to harm me? Everyone here will say yes. The answer is no. Because when you harm someone, you are trying to get something from that person. When you harm someone, it's because of something you are missing. You harm someone because of something you are missing. Someone hits you, you hit them back. You're harmed, you harm them back. Maybe you want to see someone in anguish. You want to see someone in pain. You want to see someone in loss. Because of something, if you, did, if you are complete, then you don't have those objectives. If you are perfect, you don't have these objectives. If you are perfect, you have no need to harm anyone or anything. What benefit or gain is there in such an act? It's completely superfluous. Would we uh, give this kind of activity to Allah? No, Allah does not harm. Because the benefit is only for me. The benefit is only for me. So when Allah harms me, when I perceive that to be harm, I have to understand that now it's time for me to realize that's for my benefit and run to the one who's benefiting me. Because the question comes, if I don't want to run to Allah, the one who I perceive to be harming me, who else would I run to? Who has power but Allah? Who has ability but Allah? Who? Any power or ability that you and I conceive in things has been given to it by Allah. And if you don't believe that to be the case, then watch the most powerful man die. If you don't believe that to be the case, then look at the most powerful institution die, the most powerful corporation die, the most powerful country die. Every kullu man alayha fan. Kullu man alayha fan. Fan, fan. Allah said everything on the surface of the earth. He said it's already gone. He didn't say it's perishing. It's translated this way. It's not right. He doesn't say it's perishing, annihilating. He said it's already happened. Everything on the face of the earth, in other, in other words, everything that you and I know, is already dead with Allah. Not even dead, it's, not, it's, it's literally non-existent. Now the question you have to ask yourself is, am I weak? Am I going to rely on something as weak as I am? Let's say for a moment we say to ourselves, yes, Allah is harming me. Fine, that's not what's happening, but that's, what, that's, a, that's a human response. If you need help from harm, who can you go to now? You can't go to anyone else. But the question is, why would you want to? We've made this example. A child, a little child, goes to the light socket. A little child is bobbling around, going to the light socket. He doesn't know that that light socket is not his friend. Along the way, he dips his little baby finger into a cup of water. So now he's nice and ready for a charge. He goes towards the light socket, is about to put his finger inside the light socket. 
If the mother is around, what will she do? She will scream at him. It won't be a nice scream. It will be a shriek. If she can't, if he doesn't, if he's so involved in the in the in the ambition that he has, that he can't hear his. In other words, he's gone in that, like watching a movie for like about half an hour. We we lose ourselves. Gone in the light fixture. Curiosity. Can't hear mom. What is she going to do? Or she'll say, "Oh, leave him." It's, no. She will find an object, any object, shoe, book. God knows what. She will hurl it at that baby. And it, will, it could strike that baby. And when it strikes that baby, what will the baby respond? How will it respond? It's going to cry. And, it's, and because we are like this, don't, tell, don't let anyone try to tell you we don't believe in causes. Because that baby is going to look in the direction of the book, whatever which way it came from. And want to know where, where, who, why, what. And it's going to see mom sitting there and put two and two together and realize my mother just hit me with a, with a blunt object to my head. That baby is shocked, crying, and saying, why did you harm me? But was she harming him? Or was she saving his life? That is how Allah is with us. That is how Allah is with us every single day of our life because we do not know. As I said in the beginning of the khutbah, a, a creature that doesn't even know what it means to have a self and doesn't even know what being is, what else do you think he or she might know? So no, no. When trouble comes down, realize you're the baby, go into the light socket, something happened, go back to mama. She's calling you. Oh, he whom we have, we have exalted, be warned, you are too sublime in our eyes that you should occupy yourself with other than us. And as we said before, is there a greater other than Allah than me? Is there a greater other than Allah than me? Some will say, well, idols. Who made the idol? People say, you know, brother, the, the fastest growing religion in, in, in the West, you know, is Islam. I say, you're absolutely wrong. The fastest growing religion in the West is called Ananiya. The fastest growing religion in the West is self-worship. It's based in material. The highest, fastest growing religion in the West is materialism, the worship of things. And the reason why we accumulate and worship and base our life around things is because we hope and we think that these things are going to make our lives better. So therefore, I'm just worshiping myself and my own objectives. The fastest growing religion in the West? No. The fastest growing religion in the world is that self-worship. Is there a greater and more subtle idol than that? Be warned. You are too sublime in our eyes that you should occupy yourself with other than us. For my divine presence have I created you, and towards it have I summoned you. Why do you think Allah sent us prophets? Why do you think Allah sent us rusul? Why did Allah send us prophets? Well, He sent us prophets because He wanted to make the Middle Eastern and brown people on the planet triumph over everyone else. No. Uh, he sent us the message because He wants us to realize how important science is. No. He sent us the message because he had nothing else to do. No. <laughs> he sent us the message to bring us to himself. The goal of religion is Allah. The goal of religion is Allah himself. The goal of religion, the goal of this relationship, the goal of my praying, my fasting, my giving zakah, my striving, my yearning, my learning anything, language, fiqh, uh, you name it. The goal, the objective is Allah, Allah, Allah Himself, Himself, Allah, Himself, nothing else. How can it be? God gave me a mind. When I look at all these things and then I look at the one who made them, there's no comparison. And how can I love these things? How can I dedicate myself to these things? How can I look at these things? How can I do it? Because I don't know my own worth. A man, a woman, who doesn't know their own worth, they'll worship these things. But a man or a woman who's tasted something of their actual worth, they want this undignified, they can't do it. May Allah give us dignity. So if you become busy with yourself, if you become busy with that obstacle, I will veil you. What do you think you'll veil us from? The fact that we're even doing it. 
What's worse? Forgetting or forgetting that you forgot? <laughs>